In this segment, we're gonna take a look at a two umpire game with a runner on first base. There's a lot to digest here, but specifically we're gonna start with the movements of our base umpire in the B position. Pretty good starting position. You've heard this many times from me. Probably I would step up uh, maybe a step or two closer to the mound, but all in all, a pretty good position to start with. All right, so as the ball is hit, we're gonna see we're gonna have a fly ball here hit to right center. Our base umpire does a really nice job of staying engaged with a catch or no catch. Looks back for a touch at set, uh, first base properly. Um, because this umpire is really locked into that catch, no catch, I would imagine that he looked at his partner rotating to third base a little bit later than he would like to, but does a good job there. And then the next thing I wanna touch on is some of the wasted steps by this base umpire. So what we'll see in this play is as he's engaged with this fly ball, you will give a, a good, strong, no-catch mechanic, look for the touch of first, glance at his part, but this movement right here, where he's moving back in the direction of third base, I would like to have seen this base umpire stay in his spot, and once he recognizes the potential play at second base, move in a direct line towards second, gaining a bit more distance, maybe a better angle at it, and be set there a little bit sooner. I mean, this is a tough call, a really close play, a high tag, it looks like maybe on the shoulder of the helmet, um, tough call, but maybe with, with those lack of wasted steps, he might have been there a little bit sooner and been locked in um, on that play better. This now turns into a discussion with the coach. Let's take a look at his movements here once again. Locked in, really good job. Look to first. Those are those wasted steps. Tough call, but really great timing, proper use of eyes, and great mechanic. Now let's move to this discussion between this umpire and the, the head coach at third base. What I like about this is, is he's answering questions, good body language, good demeanor, not escalating. You know, once again, it helps his coach comes out under control, um, reasonable, looking to have a conversation with this umpire, but really handled well. As we look to 2023, what this base umpire will have to do is motion for that coach to stay at the 45, close the gap and have that same conversation with him. Now as we move to the plate umpire, what I'd like to see him do a little bit better here is move a little bit quicker out of the gate to get to third base on a rotation. And once this umpire realizes there is no play at third base, the definition of a play is ball and runner. He does not have either one here. Once he determines the throw is gonna go into second base with no play, I would like to see this plate umpire immediately head back towards home plate for the potential of a play here. Now, as this play develops, what I do not like about the actions of this plate umpire is we have a third base coach who is out of his dugout yelling across the diamond at our base umpire. This plate umpire is not engaged with this situation, is not addressing this. This simply could have been handled by this plate umpire nicely asking this base coach to please get back into your box, let your head coach take on this discussion. And as this plate umpire is walking away, he has no engagement whatsoever with the argument or discussion that's ensuing on the field. So it's always good to, to lend a second set of eyes and ears on what's going on during these discussions that will help in the uh, report process if there is an ejection and also being able to clean up this third base coach, any conversations or comments from the bench. But overall, as a plate umpire, we have to stay engaged with this play, especially when there is an, a, a situation with a coach on the field.